And so whenever you change the main.go, it doesn't change that hello program until you run go build again. Go build. And then it will change it, and then you can run it. Just in terms of the distinction between compile, you said obviously in HTML there's no issue with compiling. In JavaScript, like when we are using JavaScript and uh, on the web page, you click on console and the developer tools, and there'd be like errors there. Those weren't compiled. Were those compile errors, or were they like run time errors? Yeah, so JavaScript's an interpreted programming language, which means it, it works very similar to this, except you get those errors when you run your program, right? Uh -huh. This has a two-step process instead of one step, right? Instead of just go run my program, it's build my program and then run it, okay? Uh, which is trivial. You can either do go run or you can just do, I, I've been using a semicolon, right? And then this is like do this command and then do that command. So it's, it's not a big deal, but it's two steps is what I'm saying. Um, the two steps has advantages. Uh, one of the big advantages of it is it means when I compile a Go program, I can run it anywhere. I don't have to have anything installed on the machine that I'm running it on. Okay? If I have a JavaScript program, I have to have a JavaScript interpreter when I run it. So I have to have JavaScript installed. If I use Node.js, I have to have Node.js on the server. If I use Go, I don't have to have Go installed on the server. I have to have Go installed on my machine. Okay? And then the resulting thing I build, I can just put on the server and run it. So, that's, that's the advantage. So I typed go build. I mean, I typed, uh, yeah, go build. And it didn't change the, uh, I typed go install. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Otherwise, you'd have to do dot slash hello. But um, on your terminal, you're entering a command. Uh, if you go to your terminal, and you're entering go build semicolon dot forward slash hello. Yeah. Semicolon just means here's another command. Yeah. yeah. And then the dot forward slash means the hello inside of this folder. Yeah. Two dots is parent, one dot is, is here. It's yeah. the current yeah. right here. One dot's current. Would it work dot space hello? No. Just That's curious, is that dot? No. no. Why do you need forward slash? I thought that took you into the folder, the hello. Well, folder. it's saying, uh, it's like going to the current folder. Okay, open up the current folder. That's yeah. Right. All right. Because if you do it without it, it won't recognize the current folder. It, it'll run it from, so if I say which hello, oh, it'll run it from. Uh, which is a command which tells you where the binary is defined, right? So we've been using ls, so if I say which ls, it says that's inside of this folder, mm -hmm. slash bin, slash. So if I say which hello, you'll see it's inside of our, of our go pass, right? So ignore that, it's slash bin, it's in bin slash hello. Um, and that's what we did when we said go install, it's working. So yeah, you could also run go install and then hello. And that takes it for good. Then. Yeah. yeah. That, that also works. Whereas the build is just the current folder. The current folder and it won't change it into the, in the bin folder. Right. Yeah, so go install works too. Okay. Any, any other questions about this basic program? Really simple. Hello world is like the traditional first program everybody writes. Um, so, pretty easy to do and go. It's not a lot, it's not super complicated in here. Um, so let's see what we got. We did machine setup. Uh, oh, okay. Uh, the only thing I haven't talked about in this section is the go doc. So, there is a subcommand. This go doc command. Just, I'm not sure everybody actually has this. Can everybody type go doc and see if it does anything? Is it one word? Yeah, all one word. Yeah. Everybody got that? Okay, so the neat thing about go doc is you can um, get documentation for libraries and stuff. So we use the FMT package, right? So I can say go doc space FMT. And that will give me the documentation for the format package. Uh, so it'll print a whole big huge block of text. Uh, and this is English text, I mean this isn't code. Uh, and it's telling you what each of the functions defined in that package do, how to use them. Uh, and so if we wanted to see the one we used, which was print line, we'd say FMP space print line. And that would print just the print line documentation. So print line formats using default formats for offer and writes to standard output. 
standard output is the terminal. That's this stuff here. Spaces are always added between operands and new lines appended. So you can see how this is like really technical, right? It's very exact. It's telling you exactly how it behaves, but it's doing so using language that like programmers are really comfortable with. Is it case sensitive? Uh, yes. So everything that goes case sensitive uh, and functions used from other packages always start with capital letter. Okay. So this is not valid. If I run that with lowercase p. That was an error I had. Yeah. <laughs> and I'll refer to unexpected name. So that doesn't work. Uh, and also all these matter too. Like that, that's going to throw an error. Undefined. The capital I in the middle there. Uh, so you, you have to start with a capital letter for functions from other packages. Uh, and then the package names are, are, they don't have to be, but by convention they're lowercase. So uh, FMP is all lowercase. Okay. And the dot here is like uh, resolving. It's like finding inside of that package. Um, and we can see that that package has the, uh, the documentation we can see here using GoDoc. That's super handy. The other place you want to see documentation is on the Go website. So you can go golang.org, uh, you go to the documentation up here, packages, and there is FMT, uh, and you can see all of the documentation, right? And so inside of here, there's going to be a list of functions, and print line is here. Uh, so it's, it's really easy to find uh, the documentation for various functions that you would like to use. So the same exact documentation that you see here. Um, okay, everybody following that? So this is your friend, the, the GoDoc, uh, the golang.org slash package. It, you use it a lot when you're writing practical programs. Because um, you don't want, there's no reason to memorize this stuff. Uh, you know, you don't need to memorize all of the names of the funk libraries. You will on accident just because you use them all the time, but uh, yeah. Okay, so. I like that. It'll become muscleman. Um, Okay, so that's, that's our program. Uh, we, we looked at GoDoc, right? We, we, it turns out we can get Go documentation for our own program. Uh, which has no documentation because we didn't put it in. Okay, so how do we do that? We use what's called the comment. Everybody know what a comment is? So comments in Go, you can start with uh, double slashes, like that. Uh, the important thing about comments is they're ignored by the compiler. They're just there for you, okay? So you, this wouldn't be a good comment, but uh, you know, you might say something like, uh, right? The other style of comment you can do is slash star and then it ends with star slash. And the difference between these two is the, the double slash comment, it's only the current line. So if I put stuff here, this is not a comment, right? This is like go code when I'm not inside that same line. And stuff in between the stars is a comment, okay? So if you need multiple lines, you use the slash star, and if you need just one line, you use slash slash, okay? So it's good to comment your code, because it's important, you're sort of doing two things when you're programming. One is you're telling the computer something to do. That's like your primary goal, right? You're trying to make the computer do something. But a secondary goal is you're also like, you have colleagues, they would like to be able to understand your code, and so that's why you use comments, right? And it's for your own benefit, too. Uh, sometimes it gets like, you wouldn't need any comments in this program because it's so trivial, but sometimes you have kind of a hard to understand bit of code, and you can use a comment to say, you know, don't change this or, or whatever. Um, so, Go uses those comments, uh, because this is a main package, it may be a little tricky. So I'll just show you um, how you can see this. So if we go to, if you type which Go, and so mine's in user local Go, we can see the source code for the F FMT library. Um, so we get source, FMT, okay? That's the name of the package we use. It's the same name of the folder. And that's how you find stuff. And we can see all kinds of stuff in here. Um, 
So in the print.go, we can see all the source code for the, the print function. So if I Uh, so cat uh, takes a file and just out export, uh, prints it to the screen. What's the direct? Okay, so that, that's like the, the terminal stuff. So pipe takes that output and sends it to another command, and then grep is like a way to search. So what I've done is I've taken that huge block of text, and then I look for a thing that had print line. And so this is actually the definition of the function that we are using. And right before it is a comment. And that's where the documentation for the print line function comes from, is from this comment before the function name. So the neat thing about documentation in Go is it's just the comments you put in your code. There's no extra level, there's no Java doc, there's no, uh, you don't have to write a special page for it. You just, if you comment your code, you'll get nice documentation. Um, every fall in that? Maybe that's a little confusing. Well, it's hard to follow because uh, our folder is different. Like, we don't have US or local, right? Uh, if, if you're on OS X, you probably do. But if you're in Windows, you don't. Uh, um, C forward slash go, I think, on Windows. C capital. You could do, uh, th this isn't going to work for everybody, right? But this is called substitution, and you can use that, right? So I could do, oops. Are you saying you basically made it so we can use the OX commands instead? Uh, so basically, what I did there is I substituted the, the path to your go where your Go is installed. And then, but this isn't going to work for everybody because I'm using a different shell, so don't worry about it. But anyway, theoretically, you can use uh, commands in the terminal to do that kind of stuff. Uh, but that's pretty advanced, um, and we don't have to worry about that. Uh, so anyway, the point being that the, the documentation is just the comments in the source code, so there's no extra layer here. Uh, and so if you, if you wanted to know, you know, well, OK, I, it tells me how it works, but I want to see what it's actually doing. Uh, the other way you can do this, you don't have to use a terminal, you can go to the website, click print line, and you'll see the source code. Uh, and so there's your source code, that's what it's doing. Um, and the neat thing about this is, the Go code you write is not that different from the Go code that comes with Go. And so if you want to understand, oh, how do I do something, often the best place is to go look and see what they did, okay? Because they made good Go code, and so you can see how it works. Um, now obviously this is super advanced, we haven't covered any of this stuff yet, and so you probably don't understand what these things mean, but I'm just showing you where you can find it, okay? Um, the thing I like best about Go is that there's an operator, colon equals, because it kind of looks like some little cartoon character. <laughs> yeah. Can you like show us how to get there again? Yeah, yeah, so if you go to uh, oh, okay. golang.org slash package slash fmt, and then uh, pound print line. And then you'll see this link, and you can just click it, and it takes you to where, it, where it's defined. Uh, go back one. Whoops. On. Um, right. OK. So that's GoDoc. Uh, it's super useful. And it's, we'll see more of it later, uh, but I just wanted to introduce it right here. So let's take some of these pro uh, problems. Yeah? Uh, do you have to run some commands to generate the documentation for the comments or something? Uh, uh, no, because uh, the go doc command like, reads your source code okay. and does it that way. So there's, the reason ours does not is because it's a command line application and not like a package. Um, so it just kind of a little bit clumsy. Um, but we'll see examples later. Um, so we did this one. We created a program which prints Hello World to the terminal. Okay, so everybody was able to make a Hello World program and go. Um, this next question: What's white space? I think we know what white space is. Any questions about white space? Okay. What are the two ways of writing a comment? Everybody can Double forward slash. Otherwise, you can do the forward slash. Perfect. 
Uh, okay, so our program began with package bean. What would files in the FMT package begin with? No, it would not start with package main, that's right. That's right, package FMT. So we can see that uh, when we look at the... Uh, well, we're looking at the files that we imported, right? And see, they start with package FMT, okay? So there's the, that's the two types of, of uh, source code in Go. And there's package main, which when you run Go build, it creates that executable. But then there's also packages like this, package FMT, which are used by other Go programs, okay? Uh, so we're using the function from this package. This package itself, you don't build into anything, okay? It's just part of another program. Um, this actually turns out to be a big deal because in language like C, uh, it turns out that the inclusion of other source is, it's not even part of C, it's part of the preprocessor, it's just complicated, okay? And the same is a little bit true of JavaScript in the browser. How do you include another library in JavaScript? It's pretty clumsy, okay? So it's a big part of the language that they put this in there immediately. It's, it's part of the modularity of the language is a part of their goal of making the language, okay? Um, but this is not any different than you would say doing C Sharp or Java or those other programming languages, um, or C++ kind of. Uh, okay, any questions about that?